Hi, welcome to another Fluid SharePoint video. My name is Colin Kelly Cook. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe this video so I can keep bringing you more fresh new content. So today we're going to take a look at how to get yourself set up with a free Office 365 developer tenant. Microsoft allow this so that developers can get online, use the Office 365 services, and do some development work against the platform. I'm going to show you how to go to the website, get your account, get yourself set up, do some basic settings in your tenant, and get into the Power Platform services. So the first thing we need to do is just open up a browser window and head on over to developer.microsoft.com. Here we can see all the products and services and tools that are available. We're interested in Microsoft 365, so let's just click on Microsoft 365. It will take us over to the developer page for that service. And then under programs, we can go to the Microsoft 365 developer program. Simply click join now. So here it's going to ask us to sign in. If we already have an account, an Outlook account or a Microsoft account, we can use that here. Um, for those of you who don't, I'm going to go through this process. We can just create a new account. So here I'm going to click create a new one. It's going to ask me for an account. Now I still don't have an account, so I need to click here, get a new email address. And I'm going to sign up as fluid SharePoint dev at outlook.com. Then it's going to ask me to give itself a password. You can tick or untick this box to receive information and offers from Microsoft about the services. I'm going to choose not to, and then I'm going to click next. Now I'm quickly going to skip through this process and come back when I have my account. So I've set up my account. I skipped through some of the personal details there, but you guys should find that no problem. Now all I need to do is just finish and setting up my account so that I can sign up for the Dev Center. To do that, I just need to go to my profile and click on Add Your Name. So in here, I'll just give it my first and my last name. Attempt to solve the riddle without getting it wrong. And there we go. So now I have myself set up with my Fluid SharePoint dev at outlook.com. So if I head back over to the dev center, now once you've added your name and headed back over to developer.microsoft.com, what you may find is that your account doesn't update immediately. You'll notice here it says it might take a few hours. So what I'm gonna do is just log in as one of the accounts that I have and show you how we can get the tenant set up. Okay, so now that we're logged in with our account, our first and last name exists in our account. This is one that I'd pre-prepared earlier. We can now click on the join now, which will take us to the Office, Office 365 developer program sign up. Just choose your region. For me, this is the United Kingdom. For those of you who live in different countries, obviously just choose your um, region that's um, specific to you. Now in here, we have to place a company name in, so I'm just gonna call my company FS Deb for now, accept the terms and conditions of the Office 365 developer program and just click next. Now we just need to go through and fill out some details. It wants to know a little bit more about us, information technology, um, and we will just pick personal projects for a lot of these. And we are interested in the Power Apps, uh, Power BI and SharePoint. So now we can click join. Okay, so now we've been signed up. So welcome to the Office 365 developer program. Now this is more than just a single tenant. There are lots of different things that we can do in here. There are lots of blogs, events, videos, code samples. It's a really good resource for anybody who's looking to start developing or people who are already developing. It's also a great community around it. Now what we need to do is get ourselves set up with a subscription and get ourselves a tenant set up. So if we click here on set up subscription, again, it's just gonna ask us for some details. So I'm in the United Kingdom. Now we need to create a username. Now for me, I always use admin as my first username, just because this is a primary account that I'm gonna use for everything. We can add new accounts later on, um, and we can change this account later. Now we have to create, create a domain. Now the domain name's really important here. Once you've set up a domain, you cannot really release that tenant, and you cannot reuse the name for the domain. It's literally set out as it is. We're gonna add our own um, domain name later on, but this is the primary domain for the tenant. So make sure you choose something wisely. If you have an account or a name that you want to use later on for production, don't put that in here. Maybe use something as a developer name and then come back and use this as a production name. So for me, I'm gonna create a, a domain called Fluid SharePoint Dev, and I believe I already have one named that. So I'm gonna see Fluid SharePoint Dev 02. Now you'll notice here it's given me a username of 
the username that I've selected at the domain name I've selected on Microsoft.com. This is how all Office 365 tenants are set up underneath and then we add our own custom domain on top once we're ready. We're just gonna set up a password, um, which I will just choose here. And continue. Now we just need to go through and give it some more details. So I'm just gonna skip through this bit. So here we go, once you've completed all your information, you'll find yourself on your Office 365 Developer Subscriptions tab. So at any point, if we need to get back to here because we've logged off, all we need to do is just reopen a window at developer.microsoft.com. Again, head over to Microsoft 365, click on Programs and Microsoft 365 Developer Program. Now, if we're already signed in here, we don't have to worry about going through the Join Now process. We just need to click on My Dashboard and it will bring us directly back to our subscriptions. So you can see here it set us up a subscription with fluidsharepointdev02.onmicrosoft.com. We get a renewable E5 subscription. Now what this means is this was this is going to expire on July the 1st, 2020. Now I have to come in and manually renew the subscription if I want to keep it going. The reason for this is they don't want people to just have a developer subscription that sits in the background and never gets renewed. Um, what we ideally don't want to do is we don't want to be doing anything from production on this server anyway. We want to be just doing development work. We're going to be exporting and saving a lot of the things that we have there, doing a lot of things with scripts, so we don't have to worry too much about when this subscription expires. We get 25 user licenses. This means we can set up 25 users um, within the tenant itself as test users, and we can do a lot of testing and development with that, so that's perfect. So now if we click here on Go to Subscription, it's going to ask us to log in with the username that we created. And here we go. So next up, we're gonna take a look at how we can actually set up the tenant. We're gonna go in, we're gonna create some users, we're gonna assign some licenses, get some of the services up and running, and we're gonna look at how we add our own custom domain if we want to. Normally, I don't do this for the um, developer tenants, but it's a good idea to show you, because if you want to use different login names, then that's what you can do. So here we are logged into the Office 365 tenant. Now. If we click on admin here, it's going to take us to the admin portal. We just need to choose the account that we created for our subscription. This is the main admin page. So we're going to get very used to using this page to manage our entire tenant. There are a few more um, different administration portals, but we're not going to worry too much about those yet. So if at any point you need to get back to the administration side of your tenant, um, all we need to do is just go to portal.office.com. Sign in with the admin account that we have created. So fluid SharePoint point dev 02.onmicrosoft.com and just click next. That's going to identify the tenant that account belongs to, so we don't need to tell it what it is. Obviously, we do know it because it's our name here. But let's just log in. So once we're logged in, we'll be taken to the same page that a normal user would see. So we get our first experience as we come in. Here is where everything is, but we will actually see this admin um, app here. We can also go to the waffle and we'll see the admin there. If we just click on that, it'll take us back to the admin center. So to start with, if we click show all on the left, we can see all of the different settings that we have available. The first one we're gonna take a look at is the users. So if we expand this and click on active users, so what we see here is a list of all the active users that currently exist in our tenant. Colin Cook, admin at fluidsharepointdev02.microsoft.com. You're currently the only user in my tenant. Now I'm gonna leave this account as is. I'm not gonna give it a license and I'm not gonna assign it in subscriptions. The reason for that is I want this to remain as the admin account. I want this to be the account that I always log in for, a vanilla account that isn't messed with, and doesn't have any permissions to do anything. I find that way it just makes it easier to keep things clean and simple. So we can add a new user. So here we can add a new user. So let's just add myself in with my new surname and give myself a display name. Now the username here, I can assign whatever I need to assign. So we'll just do ckc at fluidsharepointdev02.onmicrosoft.com. Now you can see there's the option to drop down. This is when we add our custom domains in that we can actually choose from these. So we'll go through that later on. We can auto generate the password for this because it's just a developer's tenant. I'm just gonna assign the password myself. 
I'm not going to ask myself to, to sign on uh, and change my password because I know the password that I've put in and then we're going to click next. Now here we get to assign licenses to the user. So my original admin tenant, you'll notice it said it was unlicensed. It's just a user that allows me to log in. It does have privileges as an admin within the tenant, but it doesn't have any license that are in existence. Now, luckily for us, Microsoft increased the service not long ago to allow for an E5 subscription. An E5 subscription is the highest enterprise level subscription that can be obtained. It gives us the access to all the services, all of the advanced features. It's really good for development, really good for learning because it means we can see how all the features go. But we do need to be aware that when we are developing that this may not be the experience that people who are users or our clients may be. So whenever I'm doing any development work or whenever I'm doing any work for a client, I'm making sure that their tenant has those features available before I go ahead and use them. So I am gonna sign this new user a license. I'm gonna give them the Microsoft 365 E5 developer license. Now, if we expand the tab underneath, we can see we also have the option of choosing which services the user actually is allowed to use. Now, at first, obviously, this is quite an overwhelming list, but we're not gonna to worry too much about these um, at the moment. The ones that we are mostly interested in is the Power Apps for Office 365, Power PI Pro, and we want the SharePoint Online. These are the ones we're gonna be working with mainly at the moment. And because it's a developer tenant, I'm not gonna to worry too much about going through and removing all these. If this was a production environment and I hadn't released these services yet, I may think twice about just opening them up exactly like this. So let's click next. Now here we can give them um, administration roles. So if you wanted to set up multiple admin users, here's where we could do that. For this user, I'm gonna say they have no admin center access. As I said before, I'm gonna keep my admin account for my admin, and this is gonna be a simple user account. That way I can tell the difference and experience how people would see things. If I did want to apply an admin center role, I would just tick on the admin center access and then give them whichever I need. Global admin gives them access to all of the services and all of the services administration centers, as well as the Office 365 administration. For some um, people and for some users, you may want to assign individual administration permissions. So SharePoint admin, for example, if I just wanted my SharePoint administrator to have administration access to that, I can do without giving him access to everything. So again, for this one, we're just going to create them as a user and we're going to click next. So now it's just going to let us review all of our settings, which we're happy with. So let's finish adding the user. So here we can now save this as a template. So I'm going to set up multiple users in exactly the same way. I can set this up as a template and use it later on. For this purposes and in my developer account, I'm not that fussed about that. So we're just going to close this down. Okay, thank you very much, Microsoft. You've been amazing today. So there we go. So now we have our CKC um, user set up and we also have our admin set up. Now if we did anything wrong or we want to make any changes it's all possible. Let's just click on Colin Kelly Cook here. Here we can see sign is allowed, we've got his username, roles, contact information which we can change. We can also click over here on licenses and apps and here we can see the license that's assigned and the apps that are assigned. So we can make any changes we need to, we can remove the license um, and assign it to someone else if we want to. So the important thing to remember is we only have 25 licenses. So if I set up 25 users and I sign my license, I no longer have access to sign anymore. However, these licenses are reusable. So if I wanted to remove this license, I can literally go in, tick here and save that. That license now becomes available for another user. So we can switch these around as we need to. They're not tied specifically to that user. However, that user obviously will lose access to everything they had access to. So let's just drop back in read the license on there and save the changes. So we're pretty much set up. We've got our tenant, we've got our admin user, we've also got our user who's gonna be signed into the Power Platform service. So let's sign in as our user, head over to the Power Platform service and create our first app. So here's a little trick that I like to use when I'm logging in with different accounts. Now in a single browser window, you can't log in with multiple accounts at the same time because it's gonna store those in your cookie. You can use Chrome and then Microsoft Edge, and you can log into two different accounts. But if you log into an incognito window, it's not going to remember any of the logins that you've currently done. So we can log in as a completely new user. So here, if we head over to portal.office.com and then sign in with that username that we set up earlier. So here we could use admin, but I'm going to use the user that I've set up. So this is the account that has the license assigned to it. Just click next, put my password in and click sign in. 
And it's going to ask me, do I want to stay signed in? Now I'm going to say yes, just so that when I move over to the different services, it's going to, it's going to keep me logged in. So it's the first time I'm logged in, it's going to show me some uh, helpful information and tell me where everything is. So here's the basic information and the basic services. If we click on what we call the Wapple up the top left and then all apps, we'll see a list of all the apps that we have available. Now, because we set this account up with all licenses and all apps, it has a lot of information there. But one we're interested in is going to check out Power Apps. So if we click on Power Apps and head over to that. Now, what you'll notice up in the top left hand corner is every time we go to a new service, it goes to a completely new website. This can become confusing if you have logged in in a browser with other users. If I unlog out of one service and then click to a service, it can re-log in as the old service. So what I like to do is sign out, completely close down any windows and then reopen or use the incognito mode when I'm using different users. It just keeps things simple. So here we are, we have Power Apps available. We can create new Canvas apps. Um, we can create new model driven apps. We have everything just where we need it to be. Thanks for watching. I hope the video provided some value for you. If it did, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also head over to my website, www.fluid-sharepoint.com. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If there's any content you'd like to see in future, please let me know.